Well, I've got a pine board cut out. You know what that means? Another beginner's project. A project that uh, I've been asked about repeatedly on the channel. And that is, can't you make a tube circuit that operates on low voltages, safe voltages? I've heard about these tubes called space charge devices and people running 12 or 18 volts on ordinary tubes. Um, how does that work? So this project is going to be a tube type project. It's a regenerative receiver with one stage of audio amplification and it's going to operate on 12 to 24 volts. And to accomplish that I've decided to keep it very simple and we're going to use a 12 volt triode in both the regenerative detector and the headphone amplifier stages. So this is a simple triode like a 12AV6, 12AT6 triode. And there's probably 25 other triodes that would work appropriately. By using two 12 volt tubes that allows us to either wire the cathodes in parallel for 12 volts or in series for 24 volts. So it gives me more flexibility than if I were to use a 12AU7 or 12AX7 dual triode. To keep this as a learning exercise, I've decided that this is going to be an AM band type receiver, which means there's no need for plug-in coils. It's going to be a single coil design and we'll, we'll go carefully over that coil. And uh, the next question that comes out of people's mouths are, Mike, how much is this going to cost me? A lot of your projects take uh, specialty items that uh, when you add it all up, pretty soon you're over $100. So I tried to keep this as simple as possible. Um, you are going to have to buy some basic parts. You will need a 365 picofarad variable of some kind. So that's going to set you back but these are available on the internet. You can order these from radio parts stores. You're going to need one of those for tuning the AM band receiver. Rather than using an expensive vernier, we're just going to use a large dial. Uh, this can be any large dial that gives you a mechanical advantage and allows you to tune the stations in critically without having to use a vernier. So you'll need some tube sockets, a couple of tube sockets. They don't have to be anything fancy, just uh, regular tube sockets that will stand off on, on the uh, board. Um, if you do have tube sockets that have a shield, uh, go ahead and use them. Uh, there's nothing wrong with shielding the regenerative stage and the audio stage, one or the other. Uh, it's just going to improve the, uh, the performance uh, and stability. But ordinary tube sockets, just fine. Uh, you'll need a potentiometer to do the regeneration control, and as we go over the circuit, we can discuss that. I'm showing a choke. Uh, a choke always makes people nervous because these are getting hard to find. Anything from a 1 millihenry to a 5 millihenry type choke is acceptable. If you're really desperate, you can wind one on a sewing machine bobbin with fine wire, make your own choke. I'm uh, showing a piece of iron here. It's a little reactor. Now this is almost impossible to find, but what is not impossible to find are output transformers from old ACDC tube type sets. We're going to use the primary winding of those audio output transformers as our choke. Uh, Mike, why don't you use a resistor? Why do you have to use a piece of iron in the plate of the regen stage? The reason we're doing that is at these low voltages, we cannot afford to drop two or three volts in a resistor. We need all the volts we can get on the plate of the tube so the tube will work at all. So we do have to use an inductor. And uh, headphones. Now, uh, people have uh, criticized the use of 90, 100, 120 volts on the headphones in the plate of the audio amplifier tube or, or even the regen in the single tube type designs. I don't think anyone will fear having 24 volts on the headset, so we're going to direct connect to our 2000 ohm headsets. So that's the basic 
hard to find parts. The tube itself, the sockets, the variable. I'm uh, going to use a, uh, a phone jack, so I've got this luxurious uh, phone jack, so I can use a plug on my headphones. You don't have to do that. You could use screw terminals to your headphones. But uh, this being a, uh, a simplified AM only receiver, we're going to learn about low voltage with tubes. As a bonus, here's the bonus, we're going to plug some field effect transistors into the sockets and we're going to see if we can make the circuit work on ordinary solid state FETs with minimal changes to the circuit. We're simply going to unplug the tubes and push the transistors into the sockets and see if we can make it work on a pair of transistors. Hope you guys are going to enjoy this series on low voltage regenerative receivers. So I mentioned that we're going to be using a reactor in the plate of the regenerative stage and that we could probably use ordinary transformers used in the audio output stage of an AC-DC broadcast set. How do we know if that transformer is going to work for us? So we measure the, the leads with our meter and we can see on this side we have around one ohm. That's the side that connected to the speaker. We're not interested in that. Let's look at the other side. We look at the other side and we have 144 ohms. That's the side we're interested in. 144 ohms is not going to create a huge DC drop like a resistor would, but it's going to present a high reactance. A lot of audio will be developed. This is going to be our reactor for the regen. What about using a transistor style transformer like this one? We measure this transistor transformer. Okay, I'm, I'm measuring about 0.5 ohms. That's low impedance. Let's go to the other side. Again, less than an ohm. The transistor transformer is low impedance by nature because transistors are low impedance devices. So this is not suitable to be used as the reactor for our region. How about those 70.7 volt speaker transformers? Anything I can do there? Well, let's look at the, uh, the line side and we'll go from common to the highest output. Let's see what we got for impedance. Actually this is DC resistance we're measuring. 62. And 470 ohms. So these are excellent. That will make an excellent reactor. So we can use one of those voice coil transformers for the uh, intercom systems as our reactor. Generally you would like to be above 100 ohms. If you measure that the primary of that transformer and it's over 100 ohms DC it's probably going to be a good reactor for audio. Let's quickly talk about power for this set. Now there's a lot of wall warts and DC supplies out there we have the IEC connector on this one that gives you 24 volts DC. Same thing on this, this is 24 volts DC. Which type of power supply should I be using for this receiver? I think we need to use the old-fashioned transformer rectifier style of wall wart. Not the switching type supply, which is going to put noise into the circuit and potentially uh, put some high frequency uh, into the front of the regen and cause interference. So let's avoid these switchers and let's look for the old wall warts, the 24 volt wall warts. So I'm not ready to develop the schematic yet. We don't really know uh, what we're doing at this point, but we can use a very popular circuit that uh, has been out there. Some people call it a twinplex 
uh, two triode type regen. Here's a typical circuit. Uh, this is uh, WD4NKA's uh, schematic. And as you can see, there's a couple of uh, triode sections. The 6S and 7s is a dual triode. We can use this basic circuit as our starting point, our launching point, to come up with a, a two-tube approach. I like the Armstrong type of uh, regen he's got on the left with the link coupled input and he's got the single tube audio amplifier on the right. So we're just going to follow this basic uh, circuit and develop our own using the, uh, the 12AV6, 12AT6 and uh, we will come up with a parts list as we uh, develop the circuit. But I just wanted to show you the uh, the basic complexity of what we're talking about in this first video and we'll get into the actual construction and uh, circuit in the next video. So I mentioned standoffs and longer wood screws. You can see the technique that is used here in the Morgan receiver. I took some hex standoffs and drilled through them so that I could use some long wood screws to go through the socket and to mount the uh, tube sockets directly to the board. So that's what I mean by collecting some longer wood screws and uh, some standoffs. So you remember our friend the Morgan receiver. Um, the Morgan, of course, a one tube receiver is very much compromised in that uh, you have to have a very good antenna and sensitive headphones to, to get uh, the performance that uh, you would expect. Um, I'm trying to limit cost as, as is done in the Morgan uh, by eliminating the number of variable capacitors. Uh, regen aficionados uh, certainly know that the throttle capacitor, which is the way you go into regeneration using a capacitor rather than a potentiometer, gives the ultimate in uh, adjustability. Um, we're going to dispose of that and just use the, uh, the voltage to, uh, to change the regen and uh, that's one way to save a little bit of cost with a project like this. But if you want to use a throttle capacitor, then uh, go ahead and mount one and uh, use it in the circuit in the place of the bypass capacitor that's uh, just before the radio frequency choke. So, uh, no guarantees on this one. I haven't actually designed or built the circuit yet. We're going to try to make it work on 12, but if not, we'll make it work on 24 volts. This is low voltage regenerative receiver.